Alright guys, here is a homework problem from chapter 3. We are trying to find the points on the graph of this function. In this interval, this is important too. But the tangent line is parallel to this line. Okay, well, why is that a, why does it give us this? Well, remember tangent lines give us slopes. And this is a line. So the slope of that line is 8. So what this is basically asking us is find where the tangent line, the derivative, is equal to 8 in this region, in this interval. So we want the tangent line, not tangent function, but the tangent line, the derivative slope, to be equal to 8. Okay, so what do we do? We, we take the derivative, and remember this is notation you use when it's y, you use y prime. What's the derivative of tangent? in terms of uh, x, it's secant squared. Alright, and that's our derivative, 2 secant squared x. And we want to know where 2 secant squared x is equal to 8. So we set this up to secant squared x is equal to 8. And this becomes the equation we need to solve. So secant squared x, 2 secant squared x is 8, that means the 1 secant squared x is equal to 4. Just divide both sides by 2. Take the square root of both sides. We get the secant function as an output of, when you take the square root, remember you need plus and a minus. If you use the square root to solve, so plus and minus 2. All right, now remember, secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So if secant squared is equal to 2, then the cosine would be equal to a half. And there's our solution that, that we need. Okay, now cosine is equal to a half if you look on your unit circle. All right, I see that cosine, remember cosine is the x coordinate, so that's these guys right here. Cosine is equal to a half right here at pi over 3. All right, and then cosine is also equal to a half right here at 5 pi over 3, which is too big. All right, that's outside of our range on this question. All right, negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. So where am I going to, or how am I going to get that number? Remember, this is... Uh, all the way around the 5 pi over 3. I could also come down this way, which would be negative pi over 3, and I would get to that number as well. Okay, so at negative pi over 3 and positive pi over 3, we are uh, at places where the cosine is equal to a half and negative a half. So that's the two solutions that are in this interval right here. That we're after okay so that is the places that's the uh the the two numbers and the tangent line is is eight at those points so we need to find i mean we can we need to find the y coordinates of the original where this happens so if we were to plug in uh negative pi over 3 and positive pi over 3 into the 2 tangent function. That would give us the points where it occurs. And then we can finally, we, we know the slopes. We know the points. We can use point slope and we could find the equations of the lines if we needed to. Okay, so if I take negative pi over 3, which that's the solutions here, negative pi over 3 and positive pi over 3, if I take those two x coordinates, plug those guys in to x in this thing, I would get y is equal to 2 times the tangent of, I'm going to start off with positive pi over 3. All right. And if you think about it, again, look at your unit circle. Tangent is the slope of this line, and the slope is the change in y divided by the change in x. Well, 
the, that point right there in the middle is 0, 0. So this is the change in y, this is the change in x. So it's the square root of 3 over 2, the change in y divided by the change in x, divided by a half. That's the square root of 3 over 2 times the reciprocal of that 1 half. Since I'm dividing by a fraction, I just multiply by the reciprocal. The 2's cancel, and I end up with the square root of 3. So that is the point. That's the square root of 3. Um, when I plug that in, this part is the square root of 3. And there's a 2 out front, so I end up with 2 times the square root of 3. Alright, so one point is pi over 3, 2 square root of 3. The other point will be negative pi over 3, comma, and that's a property of the tangent function. If I stuck a negative in right there, I would end up with a negative output, the opposite output. So I'll get negative 2 square root of 3. Tangent's an odd function. That always happens with odd functions. Negate the input and you negate the output. Okay, so there's my two points. So they're symmetric or they're odd, have odd symmetry at the y-axis. Okay, so that's the, the points I need. And if I wanted to, again, I can at this point, with this point and this slope, I could use the point slope form and come up with the exact equations of the lines. So I could I would have y minus the y coordinate to square root of three equals m. M is eight in this problem. That was parallel to a line with a slope of eight, so that means eight is our slope times x minus the x coordinate for pi over 3. Alright, and then I distribute through here. I have y minus 2 square root of 3 is equal to 8x minus 8 pi over 3. And then I add the 2 square root of 3 over. So y equals 8x minus 8 pi over 3 plus, because I'd add that over, so plus 2 square root of 3. This is our line, uh, one of the lines. And then the other one, we're going to get the exact same thing. We're going to start off with y instead of minus 2 square root of 3, it's minus negative 2 square root of 3, so that becomes a positive 2 square root of 3. Still 8x because it has to be parallel, so 8x, and then this is also minus, so it'd be a plus over 3. Alright, and so the only thing that's going to change here are signs. You'll see we'll get a 8x plus 8 pi over 3. And then when we subtract, we end up with y equals 8x plus 8 pi over 3. And then this will be a minus 2 square root of 3. So other than the 8x, everything else, the signs change. So there's our two lines. And they're obviously they're equal to the uh, original line, y equals 8x. Okay, and then we would just need to look at the um, th these individual ones. Now, we can eliminate b and d immediately because those are negative sloping lines and this is 8x positive 8x so they need to be positive and then we're looking for lines that um, rise 8 units every time they run 1 unit so if you're looking at these two uh, this is like 1 2 3 4 units up our our y-intercepts it'd be 8 pi over 3 minus 2 square root of 3 and we could look and see which one of these two has that they look both pretty close to that number yeah, it's just the steepness is the only thing that's changed so we'd have to look at these these points of tangency are going to be like the what's giving it away are we closer to this is negative 2 neg negative pi over 2 this number right here. Are we closer to that 
are we closer towards zero? So that's pi over two. So this would be pi over six, two pi over six, pi over three. So that's where we actually touch is at pi over three. So this one's not touching at pi over three. This one is, so pi over six, pi over three, pi over two. So this one is, so that's our answer is C. Sorry, there's a bunch of stuff over top of my choice there, but there's C. To be able to do this problem, you have to understand what the derivative does. You're being asked to find where the tangent line is parallel to a given line. Well, to be parallel, you have to have the same slope. So we're being asked, where does the tangent line have this slope? So the tangent line slope is given by the derivative. So we need to take the derivative, set it equal to the specific slope that we're asked to do, and then solve for those x's. Once we know the x's, we plug back into the original function to get the y's, to complete the point where that takes place. And once we know the point, we know the slope, we can come up with the lines. All right, it just kind of progresses from there. But you have to understand the foundation of it. When you see tangent lines and you see parallel to a given line, you have to take the derivative and set it equal to the, the parallel line slope.